And for farmers, nothing is more important when it comes to advanced information than in weather forecasting. Virtually everything that's, every decision in agriculture is based upon weather, it's impacted by weather. Roger Getz is a man who keeps his eyes on the sky. His Agricultural Weather Information Services, or AWIS, tracks weather conditions for farmers and ranchers whose livelihood depends on just how much moisture will fall from the sky, as well as what kind of temperatures will impact crops and livestock. He has a service that's going to tell us how many hours of frost we're even going to have, if, even if it's not going to be below freezing. Steve Thomas runs Green Hill Nursery in Waverly, Alabama. He depends on AWIS for personalized forecasts on temperatures that will determine what he can grow and when. But we know the duration of cold. We know how many hours it's going to be below freezing and how many hours it's going to be way below freezing. So we know how much protection we have to give our plants. Roger Getz spent 20 years forecasting agricultural weather patterns for the National Weather Service before starting AWIS. He says that experience made him keenly aware of the economic importance of letting growers know whether a freeze will last one hour or ten. If we can tell them that it's going to be a two or three night freeze event and that ultimately the temperature is going to get down into the low 20s, you're not going to be able to protect it. AWIS is only one of several such weather services tailored to agricultural forecasts. And while there is an increasing amount of weather information available by satellite, cable, or online, forecasters like AWIS tap into a need for detailed information for specific regions. Weather services often give clients at least a week's notice of upcoming problems to take steps and reduce potential losses. They can't just protect the night before. They can't know that just the night before because they have to uh, line up labor. Green Hill Nursery has a number of growing areas which allows them to relocate plants should freezing weather be imminent. When Rogers Company informed Steve that temperatures would drop below freezing later in the week. We had six days to prepare and we were not ready at that time. There was, we, we were just behind in getting ready and it was an early cold as I recall. So what we were doing was we were frantically moving plants around, getting them protected and by the time the cold came, we were ready. Coordinating manpower is not the only challenge that growers face. Some need to give their electric power suppliers a heads up as well. There are some growers that use uh, wind, some that still use wind machines. A lot of them are, are run with electricity. Uh, that puts huge demands for electrical loads in some areas. More than just predicting rain, sunshine, or temperatures, these forecasts can also play a role in helping predict a grower's financial survival from season to season. For example, an ongoing shortage of rain caused Steve's business to face some dramatic cutbacks. With advance notice, he was able to minimize his losses. We have cut back on employees. We've cut back on um, purchases. We're not planting anything like we used to this time of the year because we just don't have the money to um, spend on the plant material. That forecasting can also provide some silver linings in the gray or not so gray skies. Planning ahead, farmers and growers may decide to plant crops requiring less moisture giving them options to see them through the dry spells. The pecan crop uh, here in the southeast was one of the best ones in years because the decreased rainfall resulted in, in very low disease problems. And disease is what impacts uh, pecans quite a bit. So they didn't have to worry about diseases and there were again rains that were timed just right to keep the, the trees growing and to fill out the, the nuts at the right time. One other note on forecasting, a growing number of producers are installing elaborate weather stations on their own farms and ranches. When it comes to the weather, there's no such thing as too much information. No matter whether the farm is family owned or corporate controlled, one thing's for certain, 100% of all agricultural land in this country is controlled by the weather. And that's our show for today. We thank you for watching. I'm Paul Ryan, and we want to see you next time right here in America's Heartland.